Hello, this is Jeffrey Fox, the Big Data Applications Analytics course. And we're into the last unit, fourth unit, on cloud computing technology. This unit is devoted to data systems, uh, both from an application and what you might call computer science point of view. We remember, of course, our logo. Big data ecosystem is using clouds, running data analytics. We'll give lots of examples of this here. Doing it collaboratively, processing big data and solving problems in X informatics or X analytics. And um, here are the values of X informatics we gave. And uh, of course, the education is data science. That's what we're doing in this class. Uh, here we uh, I remind, we have this one analytics uh, entry sports analytics that only seems to exist as an analytics uh, uh, activity rather than an informatics activity. But we have all sorts of informatics which are addressed by this uh, cloud computing model, which we're looking at the data version of now. So this uh, des describes the way users and data interact with a cloud system. Both commercial and in science, we look at how our data is processed from an architectural perspective in a cloud, and how uh, we give examples from uh, commercial companies, including eBay, of how data is processed commercially. So that was the. Here we have the lesson summary. That was the unit summary, and the lesson is this is lesson one. We have 10 interaction scenarios coming from uh, this very um, thoughtful uh, fellow, Bob Marcus, who was in the NIST uh, process. He was the co-leader of that with Scheidt and Baru. And we have 10 access patterns. And uh, this particular lesson just goes through about a third of the access patterns. And um, so let's get down to them. The first slide here is um, uh, describes um, where some little more detail where to get them. This is how, if you want more detail about Bob Marcus, who comes from ET Strategies, how what he did. That's at this link here, and it covers many different uh, data systems, databases, streaming systems like Hive, high-level systems, analytics, workflow, different user interfaces, events. The visualization, and um, we first have this slide that lists them, and then we go to each of them in detail. And the slides here are based on those produced by Bob Marcus at this link, although there, there are several changes in Okay, so this slide here lists uh, Bob Marcus's 10 uh, data processing scenarios, and we'll have one slide. One or more slides for each of them after this. The first one is sort of a classic uh, querying of a database. The second one is uh, using um, data streaming problems, I mean, principle using Apache Storm. Uh, the third one is moving data from an external source into a MapReduce type scenario. Uh, so this is extract, load, transform uh, process. Um, next one is actually running MapReduce uh, in a uh, to do uh, uh, some processing, possibly from a high-level SQL-like interface. Uh, fifth one is just doing analytics on <coughs> optimized environments. Sixth one is visualizing data from a large. What you might call um, cloud based, horizontally scalable is a buzzword for uh, NoSQL and MapReduce. Um, here we're moving it from a scalable data store, MapReduce, or NoSQL into a traditional warehouse. Here we're going from data stores to archives, classic enterprise ac activity. Here we're combining data from, from uh, databases and um, in the cloud and combining it with local data to do various processing. And the final thing is a workflow scenario where we're taking multiple scenarios and linking them together. So that's what we have. We'll do the first uh, 
five and then move on in the next case we'll do the variance of those for science. And the final uh, lesson, lesson three of this set, um, it's not the final one on this unit, because we go more into data architectures after that, then does the last five of these, uh, some, these scenarios. So here we are, here we have lots of pretty pictures here. We have people here, clip art, and uh, they are generating a SQL query. Here we have some way of doing the query, either our Oracle database, Hive, Hadoop, Drill, and we have various forms of storage. And this includes classical database processing uh, with um, so-called ACID um, 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 capabilities. And we have the data that can become streaming in or added in batch and in various fashions. So here we have the classic streaming scenario. Here comes the data roaring in. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Uh, then gets posted on, on a publish subscribe system in the classic Apache architecture. Here we have uh, Storm here is actually then processing it. Then we don't show Storm in this particular diagram. But the Storm then runs uh, uh, filters. Um, and um, those are bol called bolts in Storm. These things here are called spouts. Then we find events which we post back to the uh, publish subscribe system. And we also possibly store them in a repository. And the user gets notified that something important happened. A whole new supernova was discovered, or we were doing astronomy data. Um, or somebody tweeted about you if you were looking at Twitter. Okay, here we have um, data sitting maybe in a database. And um, we have this so called ELT uh, process. Up down here, and uh, we have data being transformed in a Hadoop-like environment using possibly HTFS and HBase and intermediate storage, or Spark or Giraffe being used here. And then we have sort of the old-fashioned storages, enterprise data warehouses as one possible endpoint. Another possible endpoint is just here itself, and. Um, here we have data from various sources streaming, your file cabinet, web services, or directly from a programmatic interface to the database. Well, here we're doing the analytics on the data directly. So the data is somehow gotten into HDFS. And uh, here we have two types of analysis, Hive, which is Uses H catalog to support itself. Hive is SQL on Hadoop. So that's doing classic database, but using Hadoop to get scalability, para effectively parallelism in the database. But here we can have R, Mahout, or your favorite parallel, or actually you know, decently parallel, whatever, whatever it is type algorithm. So this is a pretty um, general scenario. <coughs> Here is how um, Hive is architected. We have HDFS for the data, which is used by Hive. We have MapReduce. Uh, we have the MetaStore, which is stored for the metadata, which is stored in the uh, it's stored in the real database, classic relational database. But the data, which is much the largest in bytes, is stored in HDFS to get scalability. And here's your Hive client supporting. Classic, almost classic SQL uh, queries. So here's the last uh, set of these access patterns. We have streaming coming in, goes directly to HBase and HTFS. This is exactly what the uh, people in network science at Indiana University do. They process it using Hadoop, Spark, what have you. And then uh, on top of that, uh, here's the algorithm, your clustering algorithm, your Mahout or your R program. And um, this is reasonably similar to the previous case, and um, which had, if you like, both Hive and Mahout. And Mahout's 
outside of the previous case is similar to this case here, uh, except it also just had only had batch on that diagram. So that's the end of this uh, this uh, lesson. In the next lesson, we'll take uh, this rather generic scenario here for data analytics and generalize and look at it in various science applications. So thank you very much. This is Jeffrey Fox signing out.